Hello, and welcome to the Nordic and Baltic Oscar contenders presented by Scandinavia in New York and the Scandinavian Film Festival of, of Los Angeles and the Baltic Film Expo at SFLA. Today, we're speaking with Jonas Poher Rasmussen, the director of the much acclaimed Danish film Flea. Flea has been shortlisted for the Academy Award in both international feature and documentary feature categories and is still eligible for the best animated feature. So please welcome Jonas. Thank you so much for joining us, Jonas. Um, can we start at the beginning um, and tell us how the film came about and how difficult was it uh, for you to convince Amin to tell Amin to tell his story? Um, I don't think I really had to convince him. You know, it 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 it, it took a long time to figure out that we were going to do this together. Um, but you know, the, the genesis of the project really comes from the friendship uh, we met when I was fifteen. Uh, and I grew up in this very small Danish town uh, and he arrived all by himself and he was 16 and he arrived from, from Afghanistan and stayed in foster care with a family uh, just around the corner from where I lived um, and he learned Danish really fast and we started meeting up every morning at the bus stop going to high school and we became very good friends oh, nice. and of course I was curious already back then about how and, and why he came to that village um, but he didn't want to talk about it and I, of course, respected that. Uh, but you know, it's it's kind of always been this black box in our friendship. You know, it's, it, it, there's been a fundamental curiosity from my side about knowing why he, he came. Um, but I, of course, respected that he didn't want to talk about it. And then, you know, our friendship grew and we went to high school together. We traveled together. We, you know, had heartbreaks together. We had a lot of fun together. So, uh, we just, we, Done a lot of, had New Year's together every year for a long time. Um, and and um, then I think 15 years ago, I have a background in radio. And 15 years ago, I asked him if I could do a radio documentary about his past, about his story. And then he said, um, he said that he knew that he would have to share his story at some point. He felt like he, he knew that he would have to do it, uh, but he didn't feel ready yet. Uh, but when he would be ready, he would like to share it with me and then we could do something about it. Um, so I kind of had it in the back of my head that this was something uh, we could do together. Mm -hmm. And then again, years passed and I was invited for this workshop in Denmark called Anidox, where they invite animators and documentary filmmakers to develop ideas for animated documentaries. And I thought, okay, but maybe this is a good way to tell this story. Um, and I met up with him and, and asked him um, and, uh, and he said, yes. Uh, he was very intrigued by the fact that he could be anonymous behind the animation because what you see in the film, what you hear, is the very first time he he talks about these things. Um, and it's not easy for him to talk about. So the fact that he didn't have to be in the public eye and that he could still keep control over when he wanted to talk about these things was really what enabled him to uh, to open up. So he uh, he finally decided that this was the right way and, and the right time to, to share his story. Thank you. And, and then can you tell me about how your background in the radio, uh, making radio documentaries sort of molded the film itself? Um, but you know, I, I, I have a background in radio. I worked for the Danish public TV and radio here called DR uh, for, for a couple of years and did a bunch of radio documentaries uh, from around the world. Um, and the effect it had on this project really was the technique I've been interviewing. Uh, uh, you know, this thing that he's laying down and he has his eyes closed and talks in present tense is a technique of interviewing uh, I learned from radio. Um, it's because, you know, in radio, you don't have an image. So you need your subject to be very, be very descriptive in their way of talking. Um, so uh, every time we would start talking about a certain memory, uh, you ask him to uh, close his eyes, talk present tense, uh, but also to, be very, to, to start describing the location first. Before he starts to describe what happens, he, start, he should describe the location. So for example, in his childhood home, I would ask him, what did the house look like? What did the kitchen look like? What what do you see around you? And then he would kind of, you know, be there in the situation and new memories would occur. Um, and he would kind of relive these memories instead of just retelling them. Um, so it's, it's really a way of, of creating authenticity and uh, presence in, in his way of, of, of talking. Thank you. And when did you decide, was it from the very beginning you were gonna make this film animated or was, did that decision come later and did it, and making it animated, did it give you more freedom or restrictions? And um, 
or how did it surprise you in the way you're able to tell his story? It was thought of as an animated film from the very beginning, uh, but you know, in the beginning, I thought it would be, be maybe you know, 20 minutes or something. Okay. Uh, but then, you know, I was he gave me this testimony, and I could immediately say, okay, but this is this is a lot more. Like it can't be just 20 minutes. Um, um, and so we, I, I tried to figure out should we see him at parts, but I could feel he didn't feel comfortable about that. So we thought, okay, but we need to do this as a fully animated film, and then use some archival footage. And also this kind of graphical uh, animation, um, and you know the animation is both uh, uh, a, a, a freedom. It's, a, it's you, there's so much creative freedom when working with animation because you know in animation you can do everything. Everything is possible, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and the downside to that is it's so extremely expensive. Yes. yes. Um, so so it, it it took a long time to finance the film, um, and and and. Uh, which I think actually in the end was for the best because I had not, never done animation before. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was quite a steep learning curve for me. I, I needed to learn the process and also understand the craft. Uh, but also, you know, for a minute to kind of be more and more ready to uh, to, to share his story. Uh, so the fact that it took a long time to finance, I think was actually beneficial for the story as well in the end. And then in the creativity, because you know, normally when you, you when you do a documentary film, you go out and you shoot something, and then you bring it to the editing room, and then you kind of build it there. Uh, but here, because you don't start animating anything before the edit is, the edit is locked, um, you have a, an enormous amount of freedom while you edit because you have a storyboard artist who provides you with storyboard because the edit is just sound and storyboards. Mm -hmm. um, so if you normally if you shoot a documentary and then you you didn't catch you know the right shot of a certain person or you didn't catch what happened just over there because the camera was pointing in the wrong direction mm -hmm. and that, then that's just too bad you know because um you have to work around it uh but with with animation you can really be precise and can get the exact shots you wanted which was uh an amazing amazing uh, freedom i mean amazing creative freedom thank you and then um, with most documentaries, the story seems to change from the very beginning. You you start with your idea and it's sort of, as the story unfolds itself, it sort of changes. Um, has this sto story changed at all from your very beginning concept or, uh, or was it pretty much how you had in mind besides making it from a 20 minute film to a feature length film? Um... No, it, 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 it changed quite a lot in the process and, and I think it, it changed me, um, you know, in the beginning, I didn't think, you know, I want to do a, a refugee story and then went out and found a refugee, you know, in the beginning, it was really about me being curious about my friend uh, and his story and this black box I talked about before mm -hmm. and him really wanting to, you know, share it all of a sudden. Uh, so it, it felt very symbiotic that this was two friends sharing something together. Mm -hmm. um, um, and we started doing the making the film in, in 2013 and then in 2015 the refugee crisis hit in, in Europe and we had Syrian refugees in the highways uh, in all of Europe right. um, and that changed my perspective a little bit and of course I knew it was a refugee story uh, but it, 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 I had a new perspective that I, I felt a need to kind of give some nuance to the refugee story because uh, a lot of refugee stories are told very, you know, you know black and white and in, in headlines. Uh, but here, because it's a refugee story told from the inside of a friendship, I was hoping that maybe I could give some nuance to this refugee story and, 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 and show people that, you know, being a refugee is not an identity. It's, it's something you, you live through. It's a circumstance that you go through. And then hopefully on the other side, you can start building a new life for yourself. And... What were some of your thoughts and emotions while listening to his stories? I mean, these are some of the first things you ever heard. Uh, I was just curious how you felt personally. But um, you know, while doing the interviews, I was very focused on um, making him him feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, um, so often, it wasn't actually until after the interviews that I really had, you know, I, I thought about what he had been through. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I, I think I expected quite harsh things because um, in, the high, in high school, um, there were these rumors going around that he had, you know, walked all the way from, from Afghanistan and, and that he had seen all his family getting killed. So I, I, had, I had 
the expectation that I, that I would hear some really awful things. Um, but of course, I was surprised by uh, how affected he still was by everything and how much he carried around all by himself all these years. Um, so uh, there, there, were, there were moments where I kind of, you know, just had to sit back. But most of the time, it was actually afterwards listening to the interviews again that I really got struck by it. And unfortunately, the Taliban has come back in power just as the film was coming out. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? How how it made you felt? How it made Amin feel felt? Um, you know, I've, I've worked I've, I've worked on this film for so many years, so I've grown ties to Afghanistan in a way I I, I don't have with a lot of countries. Uh, so it was of course heartbreaking, but you know, it doesn't compare to how Amin felt. You know, right. it's it's. Right. His home country, he still has family there. Yeah. Um, and most of all, you know, it reminds him, him of his own story. And he could all of a sudden see a new generation of, of, of Afghans getting pushed out of the country, right. being in the same limbo he was in for years. Uh, and probably even worse because uh, the refugee situation now is a lot worse than when he arrived in Denmark. You know, when he arrived in Denmark, uh, back then he was told that he was safe here um, and that he could stay. Uh, which made him, it gave him the opportunity to, to build a new life of, mm -hmm. of his own. Uh, while now, you know, refugees are, are given this kind of, um, they're, they're being told that, yes, you can stay for a short while, but as soon as we can, we're going to send you back. Right. Um, which doesn't really provide any kind of, um, it, it doesn't give the opportunity to start building a life. Uh, so, yeah. So it's 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 yep. been heartbreaking to see, and you know, some of the shots from the sequence when I'm in flees Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, to see the almost exact shots, uh, same mm -hmm. exact shots uh, on a news all of a sudden was right. just surreal. Yeah. Um, this form has uh, this film has won many awards and accolades. Um, I, I think this is quite new to you. I was just wondering how this experience has been for you, um, and and also for Amin as well. Um, for for me, it's for both of us actually. I think it's been overwhelming. You know, mm -hmm. I think it, it started out being something small that we wanted to do together. Mm -hmm. So to all of a sudden seeing it, you know, win prizes at Sundance and being mentioned as a possible Oscar contender, mm -hmm. contender, it's just surreal. Yeah. Uh, but you know, amazing. Uh, I've worked on this film for seven, eight years. So to see it reach an audience and to see that people appreciate it really means a lot. And it also does to Amin, you know, he told me that, um, uh, you know, growing up, he didn't have a lot of stories that he felt he could kind of relate to. Uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of refugee stories that he felt kind of uh, paid respect to what it means to be a refugee. Mm -hmm. So for him to have a, his story out there that can give some nuance to the refugee story really means a lot to him. And I, that goes into my next question. Um, is this film being used as a tool at all uh, uh, to help explain, um, you know, refugees are people as well. And they're, you know, they're just not this figure that we, you know, we make up at the border or, or anything like that. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, but but we do make some impact campaigns and 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 have partners that we we, we try to show the film and make them you know spread the, the word about about how people should see refugees not just as refugees but see them as human beings, right? All with different stories, uh, and also to understand that you know because often you know in the, in the political environment it often becomes a debate about if you're for or if you're against refugees. Mm -hmm. But no one is really for refugees, and right. least, at all, least of all refugees themselves. You know, they, they, if they could have stayed at their homes, they would have. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 try, so trying to kind of give some perspective and saying, but this is, you know, this is human beings with different stories, and, 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 and we need to, to, to understand that, to, to um, be able to yeah connect to them thank you and, and my last question uh is obligatory um what is your next project that you're working on if you can say anything about that 
Uh, I'm, I'm slowly getting started on, on new projects. Uh, I, I am working on, on stuff. I have an, another animated film that I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to to work on. But you know, all all this um, like ninety five percent of my time goes for free still. Uh, yeah. So I can't really say a lot. I, I hope I can say more uh, maybe uh, during spring or summer. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jonas, for joining us today and good luck with the film and good luck with the awards and congratulations on everything. It was a wonderful film and I hope everyone can see that. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you so much and thank you for having me.